Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Magnus Tegel and I am a doctor uh, at the hospital here in uh, Malmö and Lund and a researcher. And uh, uh, we are worried in the healthcare, as you can understand. Uh, where is the revolution, a digital revolution? Why is nothing happening? Uh, as you've been discussing previously, especially in this. The patients ask, they are worried, what's happening? I mean, they can, they can order the pizza uh, through an app or order a cab through an app. But uh, as when they want to come in contact with us, uh, they have to make numerous phone calls. Uh, they maybe have to fill in uh, paper forms and return, it to, return them uh, by surface mail uh, to us. They think we're crazy. What are you doing in the, in the healthcare? Uh, and us working in health there, we get crazy f f from this uh, IT structure that, that makes us work. We actually work more than half our time there uh, doing admin things. And, uh, and a great part of that is, is logging in and out of these important, uh, uh, for us very important uh, software systems. Uh, so we get crazy. So why don't we have any disruptive IDs in healthcare? Because there are none. We still work the same way, right? Uh, we don't have any, any uh, disruptive companies uh, like, like transportation or hotels or how we communicate in healthcare. We're still waiting for them. So this might be a sad story I've, I've started. I've come here to give you some hope because I think actually that things are going to change uh, because there are some new uh, disruptive ideas which I think will, will, will uh, make things happen and move in, in the years to come. Have you heard about value-based care? Anyone? Are there anybody from, from healthcare here? Not to me. So value-based care is the new black in healthcare. Uh, and it's disruptive, it, and it moves, it, it transforms the whole reimbursement system, how you get paid for, for doing uh, healthcare, from a fee for volume to a fee for value. And a fee for volume, that's how we work today. Uh, in, in, when I have a clinic in a hospital, I, not personally, but my employer gets paid for the number of patients I see in a day. Or if I have surgery, I get paid for the number of, of, of surgical procedures I do in a day. And disregarded from, from if these procedures are doing any good for the patient, are they actually improving? Do they get be their health get better by these procedures? And nobody measures quality, nobody measures the, the rate of complication. One center might have a lot of complication, the other center has less complication. And that doesn't matter, we still get paid. Uh, and that is changing now. Uh, it hasn't changed. The Americans are talking about that. I, uh, after the Health 2.0, I went to the American Hand S Surgical Society meeting, and they were discussing uh, uh, value-based care. And the surgeons are crazy. So this is stupid. It, it's never going to happen. But I'm pretty sure it's going to happen because this changing uh, the, the payment system, and whoever pays decides. So what is value-based care? You can see it's patient what value. What is value? It's the outcome. It's how, how well do the patient get from our uh, treatment, divided by the cost. Not rocket science, pretty easy. But for us, it means that the health outcome, ju not just rekna pinna, säger man på svenska, just bean counting, bean counting. That's gonna gonna go away, and this digital technique we're talking about—it's perfect for for measuring health outcome, right? So I think we will see see some uh, improving things. Just to make it easy, measure health outcomes and, and costs. That's the easy easy thing we do that today. Report and compare the outcome, the results, improve care, and reward high value care. So it's the same as all the other businesses here. If you don't change, you're going to die. In a, in a private system, or, or I, I don't know about Region, Region Skåne. It's a dinosaur. They might survive. Okay, from a big, big, 
a picture uh, to the small picture to me to what I do in in, in the daily life. Uh, I like value-based care because that's what I've been doing for 10-15 years without knowing uh, uh, it was value-based care because this is a new new expression. Uh, so I'm I'm a orthopedic surgeon, hand surgeon, and I'm responsible for the wrist fractures here in Malmo and Lund. That's what I do. That's more my baby. And we've been doing uh, a lot of outcome, patient outcome studies for the last 10 years. We have registered them for 10 years that we register the outcome of all patients having a wrist fracture in Lund. Uh, uh. And how do we do it? Well, we, we send forms like this, paper forms, uh, with uh, have you heard of the, pr uh, the PROMS? Yeah. yeah, patient report outcome measurement. Uh, it, that, that's a term you might recognize. And it's basically, it's, it's questions. This is, a quest this is a questionnaire or a PROM for the upper extremities. That's what we use to deal with wrist fractures. 11 questions. Uh, open a, a jar or, a, or the lid of a jar. No problems, impossible to do. And then the patient ticks the boxes, and you get, you sum it up, and you get a score. And how is this done? Well, we print this on a paper, put it in an envelope, send it by surface mail to the patient. Patient opens the, the envelope, ticks these boxes with a pencil, probably. Uh, put it back in another envelope that we send with it, with, uh, with the first envelope, and returns it to my secretary, Eva. And Eva opens this envelope take it out, checks if, if, if all the boxes are tick, ticked, else she has to send it back. Um, and when it's okay, she um, types in uh, the results in an Excel file. Okay, okay. IT, Excel file. And then she sends the Excel file to me. 2016, top-notch research center in, in uh, Sweden. Room for improvement, right? <laughs> I think so, but that's how we do it, still today. Uh, so you're laughing, right? And you should. But the data we get out of it is extremely important. Because this is a new thing, the new black. We measure outcome. And we can brag about Swedish healthcare, nobody measures in Sweden. Still, we measure much more than they do in the States, for example, or, or the rest of Europe. So we have our registers, as you were men men mentioning, the hip and knee register and heart registers. We have a lot of registers, so we measure in Sweden. But most of the Swedish healthcare remains unmeasured. We see the patient back in two weeks. How are you doing? Oh, it looks fine. You can move around. Bye-bye. <coughs> we never check again. And ho hope that they, get, they, they stay well but they sometimes are not. So these are the results from my, uh, my wrist fractures. The majority gets well, some of them don't. This is the re result of the one year. And by measuring this, we know why they don't get well. And most of those things are actually preventable. So if we find these patients, not after one year, but early on, I think most, many of these bad results is possible to prevent. So we made an app, right? Or I, I would say rather we made a platform for an app because that's the commercial part of this. This platform is meant for all my colleagues to use the same. We put in all this fantastic data and information for the patient about the wrist fracture. My friends who deal with knee fractures, they can do the same thing, or nose bleeding, so whatever topic they have in, in the hospital, they can put in and make this information app. And we load this with information for the patient, for them to be prepared what's going to happen for the next uh, following weeks or month. Uh, who are they going to meet? Uh, so they, they see a list of all the, all the, all the um, me and my colleagues, my physiotherapist, my secretary, all the important people are here. Because this is a Lund, Malmö hospital app. And in Engelholm or Göteborg, it would look different with different people. And we have information about, about the condition, when do you get well, what can you expect, there are films, how to exercise, uh, uh, etc. So loaded with information for the patient, with the aim to make our patients 
fully informed, not only fully informed, they should be fully educated of what a wrist fracture is. And why is that important? Well, in this new era of, of value-based uh, care, we need the patients to be on, on our side. We want the patient to be able to report to us, hey guys, there's something wrong with my hand. I think I need to come to your hospital and see what's, what's going on. Uh, and to do that, the patient really needs to have information of what is wrong and, or what is right after four weeks after a fracture, after two months after a, fra a fracture, etc. Uh, so, so that's that's the idea behind behind this app to have it as a triage thing to sort out the patients that are intending to have a bad result after one year, but you want to see them before that. And that's maybe maybe 20 percent of the patient who have some kinds of problem early on. It might be an infection, curable. It might be excessive pain from from this fracture, this operation, uh, possible to to fix with with treatment, or it might be uh, swelling of the hand, uh, our most fear, feared uh, complication early on, uh, they need to see a physio, a physiotherapist at, at our hospital. All preventable uh, conditions. Okay, so this is the 1.0. This is us and in healthcare providing information for the, for, for the patient. It's one one-way communication. Then we need to have, have data back from the patient to us in the healthcare as well. And for me, working with this is basically this, this prompt data. I would, would uh, instead of having those paper forms and, and people sending back them by surface mail, why don't we use the app uh, and, and get those data back? And of course, in the third stage, we want to process that data and send, send a, advice or, or, or new RIA protocol individualized for that patient uh, and that's what we call in personalized medicine or individualized uh, medicine. Also possible by a rather simple uh, uh, technical solution like this. Okay, is this for everyone? Of course it would be even more practical and easy if we could automatically detect uh, and collect uh, all this data. And as Yona said, uh, there are cool things in, in the phone already. Uh, this is my step chart from last year. I was good in summer, not so good in winter. Then I lost my phone here. <laughs> I look at it, not every day, but every now and then. I take a look at this step chart. If this would be a chart of my rehab progress after a wrist fracture, I think I would look at it every day, right? It would really mean something to me, be important. Uh, so this, this is just a, a project we have at the LTH in Lund. Some students doing their master thesis um, worked with this glove, uh, ordinary glove, which we use in, in, the, in, the, uh, in our hospital. And then you put uh, silicone, on containing some metal fragments. So you make it uh, stretch sensible. So if the patient flexes the, the wrist like this, the resistance changes and you can measure that through uh, the Bluetooth uh, app and you get, not yet, but soon you get uh, a graph like this connected through the, through the health app in, in the iPhone. Uh, so it's not that far away, but we need some, some resources to, to do it. And as I said, we, the reason why we do this is to collect these 20% of patients before the catastrophe uh, uh, takes place. But what about the other 80%? Uh, we need them to stay happy. They, they should also feel that they are taken care of by us. Uh, and in particular, they should continue to do, to do the exercise they've done. Uh, which they learn from the app for, for uh, maybe two, three, four months after the fracture. Uh, and so we need to keep them motivated. And here's where I think the gamification part uh, uh, could be used. And I know there are a lot of, of groups in the world who works with gamification to keep motivation up, to motivate the patient. This is Italianska Vägen in Båstad. Um, it's pretty steep. Uh, 
if you if you bike there uh, you with a, a Strava app uh, you can race against uh, the the local heroes at in, at Biere uh, and you can get yourself up on a list like this i'm not on this list as you might uh, see uh, and if you have my wrist app made the same way with the gamification uh, uh, part of it uh, you could have the comp contest of who can extend the thumb best in Malmö week 44 uh, and some of you uh, in the audience here will probably go home and exercise a lot and maybe get up here in the top but the majority of patients they, they don't aim to be the best thumb extender in Malmö week 44 they're just happy to be in the middle it's okay I'm okay I'm doing good. Uh, you're supposed to, to have that much pain four weeks after a, a, a wrist fracture. It's okay. I don't have to call anyone in that team. So you want the patients who are, who are going to get well to stay out of healthcare. They shouldn't use our resources, but we want to focus all the resources we have in those who are, are thinking of not getting the right results because they need it. And we don't have the resources for everything. Risk fracture is not one of the prioritized subjects of Region Skåne. So we're not going to get more money. So we have to use the money we have uh, in a better way. Mm. Now just uh, wrap up, because I know Mayan likes this. She likes it when I talk I about like this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the fantastic opportunity I think we have in, in, in the, uh, this part of, of uh, Skåne, the Malmö Lund, cluster I, I, we, because we have two fantastic hospitals there's still a lot of lot of parts of those hospitals are still in in the front line of doing research a lot of people are still uh, focused on, on on providing fantastic health care i'm not sure it's going to last forever but it's we still have this this uh, uh, two hospital university hospital with all the resources of the university behind uh, we have one provider, Region Skåne. They have every opportunity to, to take this further, but they need to step up, as Nina said. They need, they need to do something about this because the pace in the world is so quick. So if we don't start now, or if we, if we didn't start three years ago, maybe, I don't know, but at some stage we need to start. Uh, and it's not a big solution. It's not CERN or they're going to uh, collaborate with. They have to work with us. 100 projects with, with sure. people like us. Yeah. Maybe Cerner will help us, but it's going to take too long time. They need to, to, to start talking with, with startups, and, but also people at the hospital. But there's very few doctors or nurses at these meetings. So we need to, to get them involved as well um, in meetings like this to work together. And the uh, science villages in both cities, and these are the three little extras, because every university has a science village, but this, these are some extra resources we have here. Ericsson in Lund, so much mobile tech knowledge that now is free because uh, they're unemployed, right? <laughs> so we can just get them in to our, to our system here. AstraZeneca, the same, fantastic uh, company a couple of years ago. A lot of people who know a lot about regulatory stuff. So they can help us through this process to get things going in the United States where you need a lot of, lot of knowledge about regulatory things. And then it's you here at MEC, which is a complement to, to the boring uh, old school hospitals and everything. With, with, your, uh, with, with, the, with the focus you have on the new sciences and, and communication and gamification. So this cluster is the coolest. Thank you.